Futura trainers, some Gore-Tex shoes from Futura, which I'm li I'm liking the fact that he's back in the scene and back involved and putting his face about, which you have to kind of thank Virgil for. This is kind of one of the things that's really cool about Virgil. Um, it's the fact that he uses his platform all the time to kind of boost up or to kind of give the microphone, give the platform to somebody else who he kind of admires. You know, look at the stuff that he's doing with Nigo. He's going to create a capture collection with him. Um, obviously honoring some of the OGs that kind of laid the path for him. And the same with Futura, who's kind of, you know, responsible for doing some graffiti stuff on jeans that were tied in with the off-white dunk. So he did the backdrop, I think, some of the designs for the for the runway collection of Michael Jackson one that I was unfortunately pulled from the shops because of the, it came out during the whole documentary thing. And also, I think he'd done something else. I think he might have helped out with some gallery thing that Virgil did too. But regardless, he's, he's getting a lot of kind of, you know, he's coming back into the limelight. And I think um, this collaboration is probably another indication of just how uh, much those kind of looks, those kind of cosigns from people in the industry help. And I know they do anyway, because I know when I was working at Marseille and I was getting all these streetwear heads involved and kind of helping them out to kind of, you know, he put some money in their pocket and allowed them to kind of, you know, speak to the younger brands. A lot of those guys were thankful for it. And a lot of those guys kind of were able to kind of use that voice, use the fact that they were getting co-signed by outside brand to then kind of leverage that to other opportunities. So it's really cool to see that Virgil does that for people like Futura, right? Who could who could have been left behind by the new kid, but it's good to see him kind of constantly telling the kids, hey, I know you think I'm amazing, but this is the guy that taught me all my stuff. So great to see. So Futura, so this article from um, Hypebeast says the following, Gore-Tex recruits Futura from Apparel and Sneaker Collab called Selected Memories of Functionality title of the exhibition um so it looks like it's a gore-tex branded shoe so i'm not sure what the brand i was going to say it was a mizuno but that that logo doesn't look like mizuno so it's a gore-tex branded shoe with futura um detail and designs on it i'm pretty sure there's no like kind of logo popping out from it from the outside in i don't think so it's like a black trainer with a high arch i don't know what you do. i don't know what it's similar to but it's very distinctive model, which is great for Gore-Tex if they're making their own trainers. It doesn't look like anything else on the market right now. Only thing it maybe looks similar to is maybe a Reebok. That's sort of like weird, not an instant pump, but something else. It's like a Reebok looks similar to that. Um, but yeah, it looks pretty cool. You've got some black upper. You've got that pattern. I'm sure it's a, for probably uh, a Futura thing and then Gore-Tex written on the inside. So it says the following here. In November 2019, Gore-Tex kicked off its ongoing Sexted Memories functionality series with stylist Stephen Mann highlighting a host of his favorite Gore-Tex infused garments. For the second edition, Gore-Tex brought um, on Futura, who showcased a dozen items, both functional and fashionable. Okay, it's not a collaboration. It's just him showing stuff that he f likes from Gore-Tex, right? Is that what it is? The artist Futura imprint, Futura Laboratories imprint, has been pl plenty busy with recent fashion collaboration, but made time to remix a Gore-Tex boiler suit, poncho, and vibrant soul sneakers. Okay, so that's his kind of collaboration on them. This is him talking about it. It's pretty good. Quickly check this out, video. So here we are. This is the, the OG himself that we made with our ensemble, the poncho, the tote bag, a six, and the Gore-Tex sneaker. Foot soldiers. Uh, What's that the model? It's a foot check soldier. Check the soul. Vibram life. Vibram. Future tag. Gore-Tex. So it's great to see someone like him just still about, right? And still getting the love he deserves in the scene, man. Futura was so important back in the day for me. Like, I still remember, cr like, crying when I lost my fucking Futura Laboratories t-shirt back in the day. A navy one with the kind of point man um, illustration on the front. Like, it's still cool to see that, man. It's great. I love it. That's why when people say, oh, Streetway is dead, Streetway is dead. It's like, nah, it's not going to die. If people like this are still alive and other kids are looking at Futura and Nigo and stuff like Hiroshi done and using it as a kind of template to kind of do their own thing, those guys, Streetway will never die. It will just live forever and ever, especially for youth and it coming up. Like, this is kind of, it's just a rite of passage when it comes to giving the shit about things, right? I remember that was a podcast I listened to before that, that um, Hey Man podcast. I forgot with the guy, but that's what I got reintroduced to, right? That kind of, that kind of a love for loving things again. And that's where you kind of get it, that appreciation of stuff, of craftsmanship, of luxury, of exclusivity, whatever it may be called. You get it essentially if you're a dude, mostly, through streetwear. And then from there, it kind of leads to other places. You can kind of go down the print work. You can kind of go down the print magazine route, become like a book collector, archive fashionista, or just get involved in the fashion scene in general. It's such a great breeding ground for loads of different interests that can kind of segue from it. So this whole streetwear dead thing is dead to me, man. Streetwear is always alive. 
I like the sneakers, pretty cool. I wouldn't wear it personally myself. I don't really like the model. I don't like the front of it, but I like it as a shoe to wear around town. You know, for if you're the what's that word called? If you're an urban, um, you know what that North Face do, where they kind of dress people up in North Face jackets, but they're walking around the city. I don't know whether that thing is called um, urban outdoorsman, wherever it is. I think that will look pretty cool. But yeah, quite great to see uh, Futuro doing his thing. Another video here too. Right, is that Jay? Whatever his name is, he's still he's still repping Futuro, isn't it? That's an old school partnership. I forgot his name. This guy here, he's been he's been I think um, Futuro's agent for years. I forgot his name. He was back in the day on all over the blogs and stuff. But that's great to see, man. Or oh, keep keeping in family still. So yeah, great stuff. Um, got a jacket here. A few. Oh, that black jacket is banging. Woof. That's a great jacket. Look at something you see from. Is that a headport? A collaboration. The showroom will pay a post the second edition of Sexy Memories functionality. Wow. Is this from his personal archive? Because this is banging. Some good stuff in here. Yeah, it is personal archive. So it's all the Gortex stuff that he has. Futuro obviously has like the, you know, the San Camo, uh, Bape Snowball jacket. I'm not sure if that is a snowball jacket, actually. It might not be. Um, in Gore-Tex too, that's just beautiful. The kind of thing that I'm always kind of keeping an eye on and Yahoo JP auctions. But yeah, some great stuff, man. Nike SUG, Gore-Tex. Like, bloody hell, he's got so much Gore-Tex stuff in his collection, hasn't he? Wow. But yeah, check it out. Um, great stuff from, from Futuro as per usual. Futuro and Gore-Tex. Banging collaboration. Um, yeah, he's doing a damn thing, man. Futuro for life. Let's move on. <laughs> Human made and Aida Stan Smith. You seen these? So Nig talking about Nigo. Nig, uh, he's revealed. Is this the first collaboration she's done with Aida? I'm not too sure if it is, but um, you're familiar with Nigo. You know Nigo's rep, a baby Nate fame. You know co co founder of being their boys club. Um, essentially one of the main architects of this beautiful thing that we call streetwear, and just an overall legend when it comes to you know chains, watches, belts, collecting interior design graphics you know with skate thing just an entire don in the industry and obviously now with human made imprint he's obviously dialed things down a bit from bape but also been able to kind of consistently hit things out of the park when it comes to his collection i don't think i've seen a lookbook from who made that i don't like right you want to buy essentially most of the items that you see on that lookbook which is a good sign for most brands and he's, he's announced here that he's teasing an up-and-coming uh, stan smith collaboration this article from hypebeast is the following uh, after releasing a free stripe uh, capsule last october the human made and originals are teaming up again this time for a new take on the timeless stan smith teased by our human made found japanese nigo and via instagram so this is what we've got here, this little video, short clip one, I think it's a Stan Smith in it, I mentioned, which is the heart logo on the side, which I'm not a bit, I'm not too fussed about really. I quite like the fact that most Japanese brands are able to do this, the most simplest thing, tweak the tiniest things on an item and then kind of elevate um, its kind of level of appeal. Hiroshi Fujiwara did it recently with those new red wings that he put out, the black red wings, right? It's just essentially he couldn't find that model or that particular color combination on the market. So instead of going out and making a custom pair, Red Wing approached him. He makes a capital collection with some nice John Smedley knits. And the Red Wing itself, just black with some with a white midsole. But just there's some really cool details he's added onto it that kind of elevated it. And again, no need to be crazy. No need to put cheetah print on it or to put Python leather, whatever it may be. Just do the things that you would personally want for something. And also something that could obviously be desired by most people most consumers and i think something like this would be a good um example of it it sort of reminds me of the raf simmons stan smiths as well that was the same i think the first sort of batch that came out just the, the, the standard model stan smith but with the raf simmons touch i think those are some of the best collaborations when they come out that way um let's see if we need to put out any more images because that's the first thing we saw just a little tip it and i'm, I'm sure it'll be probably an 80s stan smith model it'll be done in a very tasteful way um, it would just be a really good thing to see. But yeah, no, nothing so far from Nigo. More regarding it. All you see is that first little video that I just posted. I just showed you guys here. But again, I'm eager to see what that looks like um, when it does happen. But yeah, Stan Smith for Human Made. That should be cool. Maybe we'll see more clothing as well from them as well come together. I think that would be great as well. Because he's always dressed, you know, that's old school hip-hop influences. He's always got a pair of ideas on as well. He'd never done a Nike collaboration, did he? I don't think so. And he's always, which is interesting because Hiroshi doesn't mind. Hiroshi is, no, Hiroshi hasn't done Adidas either, has he? Yeah, Hiroshi, even though the, Hiroshi does every other brand except for Adidas, it seems like. 
I wonder. I wonder why. I wonder if if Nigo just got an exclusive Adidas partnership. They just keep putting money in his pocket, so he just stays loyal to them. Or if he's just more entrenched with, um, you know, Adidas's hip hop roots and him being, a, you know, like an old school hip hop head. Maybe that's probably part of his mo. But yeah, check those out if you're that way inclined. Human made for Adidas Stan Smith, which are due to come out when soon. Maybe we no no idea, no date. So it's just a little, just a little tease for now. Move on. <laughs> To my most favorite thing, actually, I've seen this week, um, Alix Air Force One. So, as you, as you, I'm sure guys are aware, Alix is founded by Matthew Williams, one of the co-founders of Ben Chill from back in the day, also a former Lady Gaga creative director and just an all-round bad man when it comes to everything involved in streetwear in the scene. He eventually launched his own brand, Alix, which is essentially like you know a modern day a modern day helmet lang right a contemporary helmet lang i don't know so maybe sacrilege to some fashion heads but my platform can say what i want so he's um you know the first i think the Canadian collaboration we've got out now at the moment the sort of running one with the jackets and trainers has gone down pretty well i think a lot of the stuff has sold out the shoes i really like i really like the fact that he took that weird moon runner forgot what it's moon rider or whatever that model is and put his touch on it again not taking the easy route out and just uh, uh, adopting a kind of uh, popular model introducing something else to the kind of forefront and also the idea that he's pushing physical exercise to kids who who are probably spending more time sitting in front of computers with bots trying to buy hype releases and sell them on rest- uh, sort of resell them on StockX. so the fact that he's built he's kind of going to nike instead of just making a you know silly color no he's got two that's a good thing he's got this stuff and the other stuff 